It's time to talk about 10 of my favorite raft tips and tricks. And we'll start off simple with what I'd call the most well-known game mechanic in raft, the floating floor trick. I'm sure if you're new to the game and have began expanding your raft with a second floor, then you've quite quickly noticed how annoying and tedious the poles can get. You know, having to dodge and weave between them when on the bottom floor. Well, like most games, raft has its own little quirk, which helps completely eliminate this problem. And it's also not too complicated either. All you have to do is place your pole wherever you want the second floor to be and then instead of using the regular square floors fill in the second floor using only triangles now when you remove the pole you initially placed, those triangle floors will now completely defy gravity and just float there endlessly. And my second tip goes out to the beginners. Whether you're restarting your world or just bought Raft for Christmas, this one will most definitely help you. Now depending on which difficulty you're playing on, you may spend a lot of your time just worrying about where your next Raft meal may come from. Because especially in hard mode, the hunger depletes fast. But no need to worry because this tip will hopefully help you satiate that hunger. Now I'm not even going to talk about the infamous cooking pot just yet. For now what we're going to cover is the basic fishing rod, possibly the most underrated source of food for early game. It's super easy to craft and only requires 6 planks and 8 rope and will give you 10 uses, meaning you can essentially get 10 fish super quick. Cook all those fish up and you'll be satiated for quite a while. Now number 3 is a super helpful tip for all my mid game players. You know once you start getting fed up of Bruce and want to finally protect your raft so that he stays away. Now if you can't tell already this tip is all about reinforcing your raft. And how we're going to do this? Well we're going to extend your raft by one foundation out every four blocks and also on the corners and then go ahead and reinforce those extensions that you've just made. There's a diagram I'll put on screen right now to properly demonstrate this but essentially if the gap between these foundations is four blocks or less then Bruce will just simply not attack it meaning you can finally have some peace. Now the fourth tip is something which doesn't really benefit you gameplay wise but is a nice little bit of knowledge to have and can be useful when using the metal detector. Essentially when digging up treasure it's always predetermined what type of treasure you're going to get. There are four different types of possible treasure starting off with the huge 42.5% chance of uncovering assorted trash which is the worst possible find as it usually only yields rope and wooden planks. However the next loot type is where it starts to pick up. The suitcase is the second most valuable find with a 30% chance and will drop reasonably good items such as glass, bolts, vine goo and even small amounts of titanium. And then there's the combination safe which is probably the one you want to find but with its 20% spawn chance it won't be super easy. This safe will drop up to 6 titanium and can also contain developer paintings, biofuel, toy robots and many many more rare valuables. And then the last treasure type on this list is the super rare tiki piece used to construct the tiki tower which actually unlocks a hidden achievement. It has a tiny 7.5% chance of spawning, meaning you'll be playing a while before you get all four pieces. Anyways, it's time to move on to something I wish I did earlier on in my playthrough, crafting and actually utilizing a cooking pot as soon as possible. Oh, and make sure to collect all the mushrooms from the big islands and all the silver algae from the reefs, because you'll want to stock up on those in order to create some of the best meals possible. The shark dinner, for example, the coconut chicken, the drumstick and jam dishes probably being the best ones on the list. Each give really good hunger bonuses and when this bonus bar is totally filled, your actual hunger bar won't deplete for a good 20 minutes. So honestly, this is 100% worth it and makes exploring so much more relaxing and enjoyable. And one other thing to note is that when chapter 3 does come out and the juicer is introduced, it's quite possible that a hydration bonus will finally be implemented into survival, as it is currently only a feature in creative. Now my sixth tip for you is all about the animals and their different types. Now it's pretty common knowledge that currently the only collectible animals in the game are cluckers, goats and llamas. But did you know that each of these animals have three different possible appearances with some being rarer than others? So for example with the clucker the regular type is blue however the first rare type with an 8% chance of spawning is the black and white one and then the absolute rarest one with only a tiny 4% chance of spawning is the red one. So good luck finding these guys. Oh and these chances correlate to each of the other animals as well. They all have 
have three different types of appearances. As for the goats, they have a grey and white type and a pure white type on top of their regular all black appearance. Oh, and lastly, the llamas are usually a full beige colour, but can also be found in brown and white and zebra, which is the rarest possibility. And I bet you're wondering, are there players with all the different types of animals? Well, yes, we've seen it firsthand in some of my streams, but it definitely does take a lot of dedication. Number seven is a trick I'm confident some of you might not be aware about. I actually learned about this one through some of my viewers, and it's actually a glitch currently in Raft, and although it may be patched out in chapter three, it can be pretty helpful for exploring at the moment. Literally, all you have to do is take any watermelon you have, it can even be a stack of them, and then just half eat one. And when you go to any island and pick up fresh watermelons holding this half-eaten stack, it will essentially ignore the stack limit, meaning you can then carry hundreds of watermelon in one single stack. Pretty cool if you ask me. My next tip to you guys is all about efficiency. Now when you go to Balboa, you'll quickly find out that you need engines to actually get there because the wind is going to be going in your direction. But don't fret about making tons of them, just make one, or if your raft is super big, make a couple. Because for every 100 foundations on your raft, you'll only need one engine. And although more engines would make you go faster, it would also cost way more biofuel and wood, meaning it just wouldn't be worth it. And trust me, early game you'll want to float pretty much everywhere, because saving up biofuel is a really good idea. So moving on into number 9, and this one's a bit more about late game. Once you've got yourself a good supply of seaweed and smelted it all into vine goo, it might be a good idea to get yourself a few water bottles. You know, so for when you're exploring those big islands, you don't have to go back every couple minutes to refill. Oh, and if you're really rich, you can even make a dedicated water tank just for refilling your water bottles. Maximum efficiency. And last, but definitely not least, is a trick to use when fighting Bruce. Anyone new to the game is probably going to be petrified of that shark, but he can actually be exploited pretty easily. All you have to do when you're one on one with Bruce is jump at the surface of the ocean about half a second before he lunges at you. And this will essentially render Bruce useless as he will miss every single bite he goes for. Also, once he's missed his bite and is swimming away, that's a perfect opportunity for you to turn around and quickly get a few bow shots away on his back. This trick is actually pretty easy to pull off once you get the hang of it, but if you're in hard mode, be careful because with more than one shark, this trick doesn't really work too well. Trust me on that one. Do you have any tips you think I should have included in this video? Maybe how to hide sprinklers properly by putting them one layer under your animal farm, or perhaps even how to keep the seagulls away from your flower pots? Because a lot of Rav's game mechanics can appear quite confusing at the start, but once you get to know how everything works, then this game becomes actually super interesting and quite versatile. Let me know any of your favourite tricks in the comments down below and they might just make their way into one of my next videos. Also, make sure you're in my damn Discord guys because I'm hosting almost weekly Nitro giveaways that you really don't want to miss out on. But anyways, I hope at least one of these tips has helped you guys out and if they did, make sure you leave me a like and subscribe if you like what you see. I do loads more Raft content and if you're trying to stay up to date with any Chapter 3 news, then this is the place to be. Enjoy the rest of your day guys and I'll see you next time.